Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So, update 4.16.0 is coming to JP in the near future, and it's gonna bring with it some very significant new features, some very big changes to the game. So, in today's video, we're gonna check out exactly what's going on here and see what we can expect from this update, okay? Now, apparently, this is not the same thing as the update Z that they teased in the uh, battle hour program a few days ago. It's gonna be a separate update that's coming later on. So as awesome as 4.16.0 is gonna be, there's, I guess, gonna be even bigger things coming in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that. If there are any new details that surface about update Z, um, I'll make sure to let you guys know, but for now, Let's focus on 4.16.0, starting with the first new mode, which is called Peton Battle. It's the one with like the little chibi characters, and it's essentially a passive adventure mode, very similar actually to uh, the adventure mode in Dragon Ball Legends, where I'm assuming you can select a few units to send off on these adventures, and then after a set amount of time, maybe an hour, three hours, five hours, there might be like different tiers of adventures, then these characters will return and bring you some rewards. Uh, I'm assuming in the form of maybe, you know, Zenny, uh, Awakening Medals, training items, training locations, maybe if we're lucky, some orbs and Kai's as well. So uh, yeah, that's the Peton battle. It's called passive because you're not actively playing it, you're really just like setting it and forgetting it, but it is gonna be a nice way to get some extra rewards for doing nothing, right? So that's number one. The second thing is a highly anticipated update which will allow us to set multiple characters or multiple units with the same name on the same team, which is obviously game-changing. It's one of the biggest updates and one of the biggest new features that we've had in a very long time. Um, but there are a few restrictions with uh, this update. Okay, number one, apparently, if you have characters with the same name, they will not link with each other. Okay, even though they're most likely gonna share many links, you know, probably like five or six, um, they cannot link. So if you have like two Super Saiyan Gokus or two UI Gokus, and you wanted to run them on the same rotation, it's actually not ideal because they won't actually activate any of their links. Um, oh, the other thing is we can actually run more than two of the uh, same name character on a team. As you can see, for this example, they have three Super Saiyan Gokus and three Super Saiyan Vegetas on the same team. So what this means is most likely you can run as many characters with the same name on a team as you want. You can do three, four, five, up to six, of course, but uh, once again, they won't link with each other. So this is actually not a smart thing to do because you can have six Super Saiyan Gokus, but none of them will have any links activated. So they're gonna be significantly weaker and it's also gonna be significantly harder to get their super attacks off. So in most situations, I'm thinking like you probably don't wanna bring more than two or three copies of a unit with the same name on a team since you'll need separate linking partners for each of them, right? Uh, another restriction is that uh, you won't be able to do this, like have multiple characters with the same name uh, for certain modes. Like Extreme Z Battles, for example, that is one mode or one event where uh, you will not be able to have multiple characters with the same name. I'm not really sure if that's going to apply to like other events as well, like maybe Extreme Z areas. Actually, no, Extreme Z areas have like other restrictions, so that's irrelevant. Uh, but like maybe, I don't know, Extreme Super Battle Road, for example, are they gonna let you bring multiple, you know, UI Gokus? Uh, I mean, if it gets too restrictive to the point where like you can only do it for Dokkan events and story events, then that's gonna be really annoying. Cause like the whole point of this update, the whole point of being able to run multiple characters with the same name is to like, make these teams more OP so that it makes these harder events easier, right? So if they make it so that every single challenging event in the game doesn't allow you to bring characters with the same name, then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of this uh, of this feature, right? So we'll see exactly 
how things work out. But for now, we do know that there are a few restrictions, and uh, you have unlimited potential to run as many units with the same name as you want, okay? So from there, we have another major, major feature. This is something that everybody has been wanting for so long, and I'm so glad it's actually happening. Uh, you will be able to exchange excess SSRs. So SSRs that you no longer need, that you pulled from uh, banners for these summoning coins, the gold coins, the red coins, and the blue coins. Okay, so one example is the Fizz uh, Goku here. And this might be a little bit confusing because you're like, oh, why Like, are you able to exchange it for any coin you want? Uh, technically, yes, but it's not exactly like, like exactly like you can choose which coin you get. It's basically dependent on which banner you pull the SSR from. So for example, if you pulled this Goku from a legendary summon banner or a banner that gives yellow coins, then you can exchange them only for yellow coins. If you pull them from a Dokkan Festival banner that gives red coins, then you can exchange them for only red coins. And if you pull them from a banner that only gives uh, or gives you know blue coins, then you can exchange them for blue coins. So essentially, uh, it's not your choice. You can exchange these SSRs for all three types of coins, but it really depends on where you pulled the SSR from. So for example, a Dokkan Festival unit that are only available through Dokkan Festival banners can only be exchanged for red coins and uh, you know legendary summon LRs that are only available in you know non Dokkan Fest banners will most likely be only exchanged for yellow coins unless it's like a double rates banner then it's gonna be blue coins right and uh, I'm also assuming now it doesn't really get into the specifics here but I'm assuming that different types of units will have different amounts of like exchange rates right so like a Dokkan Fest unit must get more return than a non Dokkan Fist unit, a LR must get a bigger return than a regular SSR, right? I could be wrong. It could just be like a one-to-one -one kind of thing for any kind of SSR, but it would really make a lot more sense if it was different nominations, different exchange rates, right? So this is another thing we'll have to see once the feature actually drops, but uh, I'm gonna assume that, yeah, it's gonna be different amounts of coins for each type of unit, maybe like one coin for regular SSRs, two for Dokkan Fest, three for uh, LRs, or something like that. I don't know, what you guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments, okay? Like how many coins do you think each kind of SSR should give us, uh, regardless of the kind of coin, okay? So yeah, huge, huge feature. Oh, uh, another thing is that in order to exchange these SSRs, you will have to have the unit already at 100% in the hidden potential system. And uh, also, you won't be able, to be able to exchange any SSRs that were pulled before update 4.16.0 releases. So unfortunately, if you have like a million SSRs, you know, stashed away like I do, or a lot of people do, in your box, just sitting there, just chilling, um, you won't be able to exchange those, which is very unfortunate, man. Because I could have gotten so many coins right off the bat as soon as this uh, new update dropped, but I guess it makes sense. I guess they don't want people to get like thousands of coins, or not even thousands, but even like hundreds of coins, um, just like that. So I guess I get it, I understand, but it's still a little bit disappointing, okay? But uh, yeah, man, exchanging SSRs, extra SSRs for coins for the future is still amazing. Like I'm very happy they're implementing this. And uh, lastly, now this is not as big as the other ones, but still pretty useful. Um, extra SSRs will now be stackable in your box. So before you would have, you know, like 10 of these SSR Gokus, just like taking up 10 box spots or, or uh, you know, 10 spots in your box. Now they can stack and it's just gonna say, it's gonna show like a 10 or whatever number of like this unit you have in your box. And it's only gonna be one icon. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's gonna take up less box space. I think it might just be a visual thing. Um, I have to confirm this. I'm, I'm not sure if it says like in the actual notice, but it might just be a more cleaner interface. So instead of showing like 10 of the Gokus, it will do, you know, this, but 
there's a chance that it still might take up 10 slots in your box. So yeah, don't hold me to anything. I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work. But even if it's just visual, honestly, uh, I'm still pretty stoked for it because I'm one of those people that likes to have, you know, an organized box. Sounds kind of weird, but y you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it really bothers me when I see stuff like this. So I'm glad that it's getting cleaned up a little bit either way. And uh, that's going to be the last new feature coming with 4.16.0. Obviously, the main things that we should look forward to are the SSR for coin exchange, um, the ability to run multiple SSRs or units, rather, uh, with the same name on the same team, and also this new Peton battle thing is pretty cool. Uh, it's a feature that a lot of other gacha games already have. It's not really anything revolutionary, but it's cool that Dokkan is finally implementing it. It does seem like, honestly, Dokkan is a little bit behind a lot of other gacha games when it comes to these, like, standard features, but it's good that they're still trying. It's good that they're still, you know, adding new things from time to time, so I'm not really going to say anything negative. I'm excited for 4.16.0. It's most likely dropping on global as well in about a month or a month and a half, because that's usually the time frame for uh, these kinds of updates. So global players can also look forward to this probably, definitely actually before the sixth anniversary. Okay, so yeah, there you go, guys. That's all I got to say. Update 4.16.0 coming at you very soon. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys feel about all of these new features. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.